Hello, my name is Stuart Jackson. I'm the Vice President of Communications for Nissan in Europe, and it's my pleasure to welcome you here to our third Nissan Futures event. I hope you find today informative, inspiring, and engaging. We have an absolutely packed agenda for you, so without further ado, I'd like to invite to the stage the Chairman of Nissan Europe, Mr. Paul Wilcox. Well, hello, and thank you for joining us today in Oslo for our third Nissan Futures event. We're here today at Dugar, home to the Norwegian Design Council. But this building actually started life as an electric power station, powering thousands of homes and offices and schools across Norway. And it's fitting, because today is all about the next generation of energy and mobility. And we're especially delighted to be in Oslo as it's a city that's dedicated to tackling future issues head on. We're also very lucky to have Oslo's governing mayor with us today, Mrs. Marianne Borgen, who sat here on the front row. And I look forward personally to hearing more about the city's initiatives throughout the afternoon. In addition to the 300 VIPs we have here in the room today, we're also broadcasting this live to our 15,000 employees in this in Europe because this is a very important day for us, the day that we share our vision for the future, to share with you how we are going to be putting that vision on the road in just a few short months, and how we're going beyond the car, looking at how we plug in and impact on the world around us. At Nissan, the journey has already started. At both the first and second Nissan Futures, we unveiled new energy solutions to benefit not just EV drivers, but the world around us, smart, connected, and affordable. The first was the Nissan X storage partnership with Eaton, which allows people and businesses to store and use energy with recycled and repurposed Nissan Leaf batteries. And I'm really proud to announce that we've now sold more than 1,000 X storage units to home customers, and we're on track to sell 5,000 before the end of March 2018 and a massive 100,000 units targeted by the end of 2020. At our second Nissan Futures event, we announced that Nissan Leaf batteries will power the Amsterdam Arena, which is the stadium to Ajax Football Club and home to gigs for global superstars such as Beyonce, Madonna, and U2. These used Nissan batteries will replace the diesel generators as a backup power for the arena. But beyond that, the scheme will allow the Amsterdam region to use the energy from our batteries to stabilize the grid during peak demand. Now, the work is on track, and we look forward to inviting you to the opening ceremony next year. And today, we'll be sharing the next stages in the electric ecosystem that we're building for the future of Nissan Intelligent Mobility. We'll unveil the most advanced car we've ever built, outline plans to grow the infrastructure, and share with you the future of battery technology. And also discuss how we will make the power itself smarter, more accessible, and sustainable. Now, standing here on the stage today, it reminds me of the first time I ever stood up to share our vision of electric vehicles. This was eight years ago, and I was speaking to the media about our investment in electric. Many people thought we were crazy saying we were bringing unproven technology to our customers, wasting our shareholders' money, and some even questioning whether electrification was even necessary. Well, we have a very different picture here today. Eight years ago, we launched the world's first mass-market electric vehicle, the Nissan Leaf. And it's gone on to become the best-selling electric vehicle of all time. Now it's clear the world is changing. Consumer attitudes and needs are transforming. Our industry is evolving and new challenges are emerging. It's simply an incredible time to be in the automotive industry. Now, we've been front and center of societal change, aspiration, and industrial progression. But I open up the papers every day at the moment and I read about yet another company supposedly going electric and making massive U-turns on their business plan. First it was Volkswagen, then Volvo, now it's Dyson, 
And you know things are getting a little bit strange when a vacuum cleaner industry is getting involved in automotive. Regardless of all of this, we say welcome to the party. Once they wrote us off, but now they're all signing up. But you have to ask yourself, what is happening? What triggered this thinking to move from 100 years of combustion engines to suddenly going all electric? Is that a firm belief in an electric future? Or is it a reaction to a reputational crisis? A 180 degree turn to solve a missed opportunity? A nothing to lose plan that has been forced upon companies who feel that they have to make this move rather than want to? Well, let's be absolutely clear, we want to. We are serious, we're not taking knee-jerk decisions or blowing hot air. We're doing it, and we've been doing it for years. And we're ahead of the rest of the industry by at least a decade. And we've begun already moving beyond the electric car. All of this means that the next decade looks very different to the last 10 years for our industry and our customers. It will be a decade of disruption for our industry unlike any other, a decade when those who embrace the challenge of change will be the ones who come out winning. Now, 10 years from now, we predict that over 30% of the cars sold in Europe across our industry will be electric in some form. Now, I personally believe that's a very conservative estimate. And if you consider that the current market for electric vehicles is 1% of the total market, well, you can do the maths for yourselves. We call it the acceleration of electrification. And we believe we'll see the same adoption rates that were seen 100 years ago in the early 1900s when a combustion engine car went from gimmick to absolute necessity. But it does mean we have to start rethinking pretty much everything we know about driving, commuting, and powering our world. It's a seismic shift, a giant leap forward that will be pinpointed by historians in years to come as a key moment when things advanced in a new way and reshaped the way we lived. Like the moment Tim Berners-Lee first unveiled the blueprint for the World Wide Web, or when Apple released its first digital music player. Like both of these seminal moments, it will have a profound impact, not just on our industry, but many others too. The auto industry ripples will turn into multi-industry waves. Now, at Nissan, we're known for the LEAF, the world's best-selling electric vehicle. This car was born out of a five billion US dollar investment made by the Renault-Nissan Alliance, a massive bet on the electric future. But our journey to electrification began many, more, many years before that, in 1947 with the Tama. Even back then, in 1947, the Tama was a perfect example of using electric vehicles to overcome a problem. It was developed to keep Japanese motorists moving when oil was in short supply after the Second World War. Today, we remain just as committed to using electric vehicles to solve the world's challenges, not just on the roads, but all around us. These vehicles are part of the real concrete steps in achieving our vision of a fully electric future, something you'll hear a lot more about later on. But crucially, we're looking way beyond the car itself, to consider the fuel stations of the future, the charging technologies, the connections between vehicles and their surroundings, and even the source of energy itself. It's an approach we call Nissan Intelligent Mobility. And at its heart, there are three key areas of innovation. Intelligent power is about looking beyond traditional combustion engines to an alternative fuel future, making driving more clean, efficient and exciting for our customers. Intelligent driving focuses on autonomous vehicles and advanced driving systems, transforming how we all drive for the better, making the drive more confident and liberating. And finally, intelligent integration is about how our products work with the world around them, connecting our products and services for the benefit of wider society. For us, the benefits are clear and necessary if we're going to create a cleaner, safer world for the generations to come. Now, we can improve safety on our roads by helping drivers to see, think, and react faster. We can improve the driving experience by offering increased control and better comfort. And we can improve the quality of life by helping people live smarter, 
better connected lives. Now, I mentioned earlier about our location for our event here in Oslo. Oslo is a city that shares our vision for the future. As Europe's chosen green capital for 2019, it's already doing great things to tackle some of the world's most pressing environmental issues, including biodiversity, waste management, noise, and of course, air pollution. As a country, Norway is amongst the most progressive markets in the world when it comes to the adoption of electric vehicles, ahead of even, even ahead of locations like California. So far in 2017, electric vehicles make up more than a quarter of newly registered passenger cars here in Norway, giving the country the highest percentage of electric vehicles in the world per person. For Nissan this month, that figure has topped 50%. That means one in every two vehicles sold here by Nissan in Norway is an electric vehicle. This country is progressive, proactive, and passionate about the big issues facing future generations. And perhaps most significantly, the Norwegian government was one of the first to offer electric vehicle drivers clear motivation and benefits to move away from fossil to carbon free. Things like free city center parking, access to bus lanes, and critically removing tax for electric vehicles. More recently this year, Norway opened up the world's largest fast charging station, which can charge 28 vehicles at one time within 30 minutes. Now, many governments across Europe should sit up and take notice. The time is to act now to give people a reason to go electric. Now, we have already invested $5 billion as a business to make this happen. Now we believe it's time for governments across Europe to help consumers and businesses make the right choice. They need to think smart when it comes to these problems. For example, whilst great headwear has been made in some cities to curb pollution and penalize higher polluting cars, little has been done to solve what is surely a root cause of the problem. Not consumer drivers, but businesses. Now let's look at some facts. Now we all know that the amount of traffic in our towns and cities is growing. In fact, compared to the turn of the century, in my home country of the UK, there are almost more 10% more vehicles on the roads. But if you dig into the data, it shows some interesting statistics. There are roughly 4% more cars on the British roads than there were in the year 2000. But there are 38% more vans, like commercial vehicles. And the reason for that, I believe it's what I would call the Amazon effect the boom in online shopping. With more people choosing to shop on the internet for groceries, books, and gifts, there are more delivery drivers on the road. In fact, over the past five years, van traffic in the UK has increased by 12%. That's three times more than cars, and four times the increase in heavy goods vehicles. It means that vans are the fastest growing sector in the automotive industry, and consequently, the area we can make a huge difference if we're serious about reducing carbon emissions. In our towns and cities, it's not simply the passenger car that needs the electric revolution. It's the van. So while our competitors are continuing to catch up their planning in the first electric cars, we're going further and faster with investment in electric van delivery vehicles too. And I'm excited to say today we'll be sharing with you not just our new electric car for consumers, but also a new electric van for business. It goes further than any other, with 100 kilometers more range than ever before, meaning more deliveries can be completed on a single charge. Zero emissions, driving for businesses, zero emissions, deliveries for customers. Your Amazon shop, your groceries, your Christmas presents this year, they can now be delivered from the warehouse to your house with no impact on the environment. Now we've invested in storing a long range, longer lasting, better range further reach battery in all of our electric vehicles. Now we believe all governments need to step up and invest to support. They need to think electric. They need to think smart. To incentivize delivery drivers to go green and make a significant positive impact on our towns and cities. To give businesses no option but to take the sustainable option. 16% of all CO2 vehicle pollution in our cities now comes from vans. Over the next decade, we should plan to eradicate that. And tonight, I'm meeting with politicians, city planners, regional councillors, and sustainability activists to share our plans and our thinking 
Within 10 years, we can turn every mile of every delivery taking place in our towns and cities into a green mile. Because the change must come, and it will take more than car companies to make it happen. Industry, businesses, drivers, governments, and city planners need to work together to create smart solutions for smart cities. Now, today, you're going to hear from us on just that, the plans we have to bring this whole story together to create new ways of driving and living for the 20 first century. So let me hand over to begin to Philippe Sayar, who will share with you the first step in our next generation of the electrification story. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. It's great to be here today to share with you our vision for the acceleration of the electrification. It's a good time to be at Nissan right now. The world is going electric and we are 10 years ahead of the game. We've been making electric vehicles longer than anyone else, and our first was in 1947. In this century, the very first leaf rolled off the production lines in 2010. We were, and we are still, well ahead of any credible mass market manufacturer. In fact, any manufacturer. And we've sold more than anyone else. One in every four electric vehicles bought worldwide is a Nissan one. 25% market share, not, uh, not so bad. And we've got a plan for the future that's more credible than anyone else is. You see, when others start rolling their first major electric vehicles off the line in three years' time, we'll have had well over a decade of in-market, on-the-road research, a decade of development, but also delivery. They start from scratch. We fired the gun many years before. When we launched the Nissan Leaf in 2010, it was the world's first mass market, 100% electric car. It also happens to be the most trusted electric vehicle on the planet, with a 92% satisfaction rating from our customers. The 300,000 Nissan EVs currently on the world's roads have so far driven around 3.5 billion kilometers, the equivalent of driving nearly 85,000 times around the Earth. And that saved, more importantly, our planet around 600 million tons of CO2, all through our LEAF customers choosing the sustainable option of an electric vehicle, equivalent to what 40 million trees can achieve. So the journey to our vision of mobility for the future is already well underway. But it also requires constant innovation and progress. The first Nissan Leaf was a truly pioneering, game-changing car that essentially created the electric vehicle segment. It was also the first electric vehicle to be crowned European Car of the Year in 2011. Our competitors adopted us. Now they are queuing up to join the electric world. It's time to show the way again and make it even better. Today, we are unveiling for the first time in Europe the new, smarter, better, more connected Nissan Leaf. A new icon of Nissan Intelligent Mobility and the car that we've, we are convinced is going to make the electric vehicle segment as desirable as conventional combustion engine cars can be. This is a car built to deliver on the three key areas of Nissan Intelligent Mobility, intelligent power, intelligent driving, and intelligent integration. We will see that in a few minutes. Let's take a look now.
Please welcome the new Nissan Leaf, simply amazing, available in Europe as of now. So to be clear, the new Nissan Leaf is not just an EV. Sure, it is driven by an all-electric zero-emission powertrain. But to call the new Nissan Leaf just an EV does not tell the full story of the ingenuity behind this vehicle, nor does it represent its massive potential. It's the embodiment of a perfect, exciting drive, enhancing your driving experience whilst contributing to a better world. Let me give you a concrete example. The new Nissan Leaf is a mobile power unit complete with unique, unique bi-directional charging. That means it only draws, it, that means it not only drawing energy from the electricity grid, but it can give back energy to power the world around it. This is simply amazing. And this is a technology which is unique to Nissan. No other company can currently draw energy and give it back to help regulate and stabilize the energy grid. Later today, you will have the chance to take a closer look at the new Nissan LEAF with our team member, Anna, who has been responsible for bringing this car to market in Europe. But for the next few minutes, I'm going to explain some of the car's impressive features. Nearly all the improvements have been made as a direct result of real experiences and real feedback from our customers all over the world. Let's take those three pillars of intelligent mobility one at a time. First, the Nissan Intelligent Power. Here we have a bigger range than ever before, 378 kilometers on a single charge. A new zero emission e-power train, which gives you more torque and therefore dramatically enhancing driving performance and efficiency. And from the spring of 2019, a new even higher power version with increased motor power and battery capacity, offering an even longer range for our customers. Next, Nissan Intelligent Driving. What does it mean? It means ProPilot. Our first stage towards an autonomous drive system offering a safer, a more comfortable drive in a single lane traffic or when you are cruising on the highway. Associated to that, ProPilot Park, giving you fully autonomous parking capability at the touch of a button. And last but not least, e-pedal technology, which lets you drive and brake seamlessly with only one pedal, an ingenious new driving sensation. Finally, Nissan Intelligent Integration. It proves the new Nissan Leaf is more than just a car. It redefines the way people live by offering them a new way to think of and use their car. Customers in Europe can connect it to the grid via vehicle-to-grid technology, which in turn gives them the opportunity to sell energy back to the grid and play an active role in grid stability. What's more, the LEAF offers drivers extra convenient by connecting to social networks, integrating with Apple and Android technology to give drivers an experience they expect at home in their car. On top of all of this, we would like to share with you a sneak preview from the forthcoming Tokyo Motor Show. At Nissan, we strive to make all our cars as fun and exciting to drive as possible something at the heart of the new Nissan LEAF. We now have taken this direction even further, and I'm delighted to confirm that in Tokyo, we will unveil the new LEAF Nismo concept car. Here's the world's the world first look at this high-performance, mid-zero emission concept. There's more to come on this in just a few weeks, so watch this page. As for the LEAF, we are here to talk about today, just before coming on stage. I was switching on orders for our unique European launch edition called the Nissan LEAF 2.0. Right across Europe, people can now order their new LEAF. 
with over 1,600 already sold units in Norway in our first three weeks of sales, I'm looking forward to seeing how this leaf can light up our other markets across the region. Finally, pricing-wise, for the new Nissan Leaf, it will remain keen and competitive. It comes at the same price band of the current Leaf, bringing cutting-edge technology and excitement to our customers in an accessible way. We believe it therefore has the pooling power to bring customers from traditional car segments too. To sum up, the new Nissan Leaf is more enjoyable, more exciting, more comfortable to drive. It truly is the most technically advanced and accessible EV available today. A car that lets you go further than before with everything you need in a simply amazing way. But at Nissan, with our decade-long head start on the competition, we are not just looking at the car in isolation. We are looking beyond the product to build a world that enables truly integrated mobility. So it's my pleasure to welcome to the stage Gareth Dunsmore, our electric vehicle director in Europe, who will be sharing how we are bringing the electric ecosystem to life. Thank you, thank you very much, Philippe. You know, it's time to stop talking about the future of the car, when the car of the future is here today. But for us, intelligent mobility means so much more. It's about placing mobility at the heart of a more exciting, a more connected, and a more sustainable way of living together. Electrification itself has been at the heart of the development of society for almost 200 years. It's underpinned the development of healthcare, of education, and the way we communicate, the way we work, and the way we move. And now, the technological advancements of Nissan Intelligent Mobility are placing it at the heart of the greatest challenges that are facing societies today. Nowhere is it more relevant than in cities, where we're facing record levels of air pollution, rapidly increasing population, and expanding growth in demand for power. But I believe Nissan Intelligent Mobility can provide very real solutions to the problems we are facing. So the question for us at Nissan is not what we should be doing, but how we can make Nissan Intelligent Mobility more accessible to all. That is why today we're announcing the Nissan Electric Ecosystem. It's based on the car, it's based on the infrastructure, it's based on the battery technology and on the power. Today and over the coming months, we're going to be announcing a series of initiatives that will revolutionize the way we engage with our consumers and the role that our brand plays in their lives and in the wider world. Of course, our vehicles are still going to play a key role in that story. The price point, the design, the incredible cutting edge technologies that you see here in the Nissan LEAF are going to bring the power of Nissan Intelligent Mobility to the mainstream. The increased range, along with the reduced maintenance and running costs of electric vehicles, are allowing us to open up intelligent power to more and more customers across Europe. From the occasional driver to commercial businesses, from commuting to car sharing, from the school run to taxi services. As you heard from Paul earlier, we can make big steps in lowering the emissions that businesses have in their fleets. And that's why we're incredibly proud today to announce that our electric van, the ENV200, will become available with a bigger battery, enabling you to drive up to 280 kilometers on a single charge. That's 100 kilometers further than before. From factory to customer, from depot to delivery, this enhanced ENV200 is the perfect urban mobility vehicle to reduce emissions across every European city. Significant investments and advancements like this will help support our business, businesses such as Harrods, Amazon, and thousands of others across Europe to significantly reduce their emissions of their delivery services. However, despite this fundamental role that our products play within our business, they're just one piece of the puzzle. From the very beginning, 
Our approach to electrification has always been around developing a genuine understanding of the way our customers live and move. We understand that with the right charging infrastructure, we can provide our customers with a truly limitless driving range. That's why we've built out and will continue to build out Europe's most comprehensive quick charging network. Since day one, we've invested over 50 million euros in helping to kickstart the infrastructure boom needed here in Europe. That investment has enabled us to help deliver over 4,600 quick charges across Europe for our customers. That's more than 1,000 other opportunities to charge for our customers than any of our competitors provide. And we're delighted to announce that we'll be investing further to support an additional 1,000 quick charges across Europe in the next 18 months. That's more charges on the road, that's more on the highway, and more in our towns and cities. It means we'll continue to have more quick charges than any of our competitors. However, let's be honest. For the vast majority of EV owners, their charging fuel station is their home. And over 80% of people currently charge at home or in the workplace. That's why I'm also proud to announce today the release of our new range of chargers from Nissan, starting with our double speed charger, the 7 kilowatt home charger. This allows customers to charge the new Nissan LEAF in just 5.5 hours to 100%. On top of that, I'm proud to announce a new 22 kilowatt charger. It's designed for fleet customers. It's going to be available for, of course, businesses and private consumers alike, and it's capable of charging the Nissan LEAF in just two hours. It's plug and play. It's plug and play, and it allows you to it put it into your, your facility, into your business, without digging up the road outside, and with giving you then the ability to move to electric vehicles in an easier way than before. Finally, we're announcing a new home energy charging storage box. What does that mean? We're at a, the early stage of that is available outside. You can see an early prototype. As Paul mentioned earlier, though, our expertise comes from X storage. We're continuing to grow that success. So based on this energy storage expertise, we wanted to go further with the next generation. That's why our charger comes with its own inbuilt energy storage, allowing customers to directly plug their electric vehicle into the unit, giving them the ability to better manage their costs and even generate their own energy from solar panels. Powering their car with 100% renewable energy and zero emissions energy for the first time. It's a massive step forward and a production unit will be coming next year. Again, as Paul said earlier, we're delighted to be here in Oslo to share news and information about our electric ecosystem. Today, we've announced new vehicles for consumers and businesses. We've announced faster charging at the home and more charging points on the move. We're building infrastructure faster and with more conviction than any of our competitors. You're going to hear, though, about the final piece in this jigsaw in just a moment. But for now, I wanted to introduce the mayor of Oslo, Miss Marianne Borgen. She has overseen a progressive adoption in the electric ecosystem in this city. And it's an example that business leaders and politicians should sit up and take note of. Mayor Borgen. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor for me to welcome you to Oslo. Uh, first, I would like to thank Nissan for selecting Oslo as the European launch city for the new Nissan LEAF. It's a great pleasure to see that Oslo is recognized as one of the globally leading capitals in the transition of sustainable urban mobility. The city of Oslo is definitely a part of the change that is necessary. Together we can be the change. The change for saving our climate and the change for securing healthier cities. Oslo has recently given the European Green Capital Award for 2019. This award gives credit to Oslo's achievement on environmental and climate topics.
We've been hard at work for many years already. Just as importantly, this award also commits Oslo to even greater efforts going forwards. To be the European Green Capital in 2019 is a huge inspiration, as well as an obligation. We know that we have to deliver. We see that there are great interests among our citizens, as well as in the private sector, to contribute and to participate in making the city greener and more climate and environmental friendly. In 2016, the Oslo City Council adopted Oslo's climate and energy strategy, aiming to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 95 percentage, 95 percentage within 2030. The strategy targets all emissions areas of the city, the most significant of which is transport. I'm proud to say that our goals and strategy are being noticed. We are now in the final round in the C40 Cities Award in for 2017, nominated for the most ambitious and integrated climate strategy. Pretty good in a partnership representing 90 cities and 650 million citizens. And Oslo, we have 670,000 citizens. So we are quite a small city, but still it's important to have good examples. Fully two-thirds of emissions in Oslo come from transport. And by 2020, these are to be 40 percentage reduced compared to 2015 levels. So we have, as you can imagine, we have quite high ambitions. We see two main ways of getting there. First, we need to reduce traffic by encouraging public transport, biking and walking. And the second, we need to, uh, to transition to zero emission vehicles. It is clear that achieving our goals means doing both of these at the same time. Today, I'll focus on the transition to zero emission vehicles. Oslo has, in all modesty, an impressive track record for integrating electric vehicles in its transportation system. Many ask us, what are the key elements? of Oslo's success story. Even some ask us, how is, uh, has this miracle happened? And my answer to that is, this is no miracle. This is hard work. And from my point of view, it's a combination of many factors. First of all, we have a strong combination of national and local incentives in Norway to make zero emission vehicles attractive, to purchase and to operate. Some examples include priority access to public transit, transit lanes. Yeah, you, can, you can drive in the public transport lanes. And it's no toll payment if you have an electric car. It's, and now uh, that is very important because we have increased the tolls for fossil vehicles and during rush hours. And it's free parking and it's free charging. And of course, significant tax rebates for purchase and regist registrations. Alongside incentives, we also t uh, we, we've also taken a very early lead on infrastructure. The city of Oslo is Norway's and probably the world's largest owner of charging infrastructure, with 1,200 charging points on public grounds. Another 200 will be, a will be added in the course of 2017. We also have some world firsts, such as dedicated parking garages for electric vehicles at Akershus Forest, Fortress, not far away from here, and Vulcan. While public access to charging infrastructure is, is important, we also have to remember that most of the people prefer to charge at home or have to charge or have to charge at home. And in, or in, in our town in Oslo, Approximately two thirds of Oslo citizens live in apartment buildings, uh, and if you live in, the, you know, like in the sixth floor, it's not that easy to just throw away out of the window your, you know, to charge. So we have to do something about that. So what we have done is that we have um, 
We have recently launched a funding scheme to subsidize those buildings who would like to establish their, their own set of charging points. And that has been just, you know, that came in, in June this year, and it's already a success. Till now, we have granted funding for 77 projects with a total of 3,642 charging points, just from June this year and up till now. So, does it work? One of the best indicators of success is from sales. Numbers for the first half of 2017 shows that the pure electric vehicles had in September 39 market share, percentage markets, 39 percentage market share, out of all new cars sold in Oslo. So, how do we sustain that momentum? We see three central elements that are vital to continued success here in this town. That is expanding infrastructure, maintain focus on incentive systems and continue to be a testbed for new solutions. And in addition to these three uh, very, very important elements, it's also important to have an active, active and an ongoing dialogue with the citizens of Oslo because we need to have, in our demo democracy, we need to have a support from the people that are living in the city. And we see that, it's, that it is uh, an increasing interest to be more environmental friendly and climate friendly in our city. So, in summary, Oslo, Oslo's path towards sustainable urban mobility has been a success. Still, much work remains to be done. We will continue to push development going forwards, and we are excited to be on this path together with car manufacturers, infrastructure developers, as well as citizens and businesses who see the growing advantage of going green. So thank you so much. Well, I'd just like to thank my co-presenters, to, to Gareth, to Philippe, and especially uh, to Mayor Borgen in terms of uh, an inspiration that Oslo is for all of us. And I'm sure you'll agree significant progress is being made. We've heard about market-leading new vehicles, the, the simply amazing a new Nissan Leaf, and Europe's best-selling electric van, the EMV200, with extended range. We've heard about infrastructure and our new commitment to invest even more and move even faster into our second decade of electrification. We've heard about battery advancements, making it quicker and easier to charge. But what about the energy itself? What about taking away any barrier to EV adoption, just as we've done with range improvements? What if, once our customers have purchased their Nissan, we were able to give them free power for their EV? Now, that's a mission that we're working on to make happen. In fact, today, I'm excited to announce our first major step forward in delivering this mission. Today, in Denmark, just 600 kilometers south of here, following 12 months of testing, we're launching a revolutionary new way of driving up for our customers, day in, day out, with it, without extra cost. You can buy a Nissan EV, you can install the right kit, and then no fuel, no energy cost, just free power for your EV. Now, this sounds too good to be true. But this is how we've done it. In all of our electric vehicles, we have a unique technology called bi-directional charging. It allows our customers to draw energy from the grid to power the car, and then can send energy back to the grid to contribute to the wider national energy supply. Now, using our smart vehicle-to-grid technology, we've created a unique way for Nissan fleet customers in Denmark to do just that. It means they can actually give energy back and get money for doing so. It means they will power their EVs cost-neutral for no extra charge. It's truly ingenious. and We believe it's the start of something really big. A different way of thinking about energy and about powering the electric vehicle. But we're not just stopping here 
in Denmark with this trial. So I'm also delighted to announce a collaboration in the UK with innovative energy company Ovo Energy. Now in the audience today, we have Ovo's founder and CEO, Stephen Fitzpatrick, and he will look at how we can produce a similarly re similar revolutionary offer for our UK customers. And beyond the UK, we're having more discussions with more energy businesses, with national energy grid owners, with governments, with infrastructure companies to create a revolutionary energy mobility plan that will remove any barrier to entering the electric revolution. Unique to Nissan and unique for Nissan customers. Quite simply, the acceleration of electrification is happening now. And the next decade will see more change for our customers, countries, societies, and industries than we've ever seen before. Thank you very much.